This has been a momentous, special year for Singapore. In March, our founding father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, passed away. Huge crowds gathered to pay respects to him at Parliament House across the river. On the first day, the crowds reached all the way to here, across Kavanagh Bridge. Despite the hot sun, despite the long hours, I walked along the queue to thank the people, and I was deeply moved to see their feelings for Mr. Lee, to see the warmth which Singaporeans showed to one another. We were all Singaporeans together, and we still are. When the gun carriage left Parliament House to take Mr. Lee on his last journey, tens of thousands of people stood along the road in the wind and in the rain to pay their respects. The wind came, the rain washed down on them. They didn't move. They stood firm. They were honouring Mr. Lee paying tribute to what he stood for, the indomitable spirit of the pioneers and the achievements of the pioneers, which are indelible. So March was an intensely sad time, but in August, on National Day, we celebrated SG50. We remembered 50 years of independence, how we overcame the odds together, how we brought Singapore from the third world to the first. And we are proudly, we sang Majula Singapura together, we said the National Pledge together, and we committed ourselves to taking Singapore forward together. After 50 years of this journey, I think we are entitled to look back and to rejoice. We've shown the world who we are. We are Singaporeans. We've shown ourselves what we can do when we rally together. Like we are rallying together now. We have shown everybody what promise our nation holds. But SG50 is not a destination. It's the start of a new chapter. So at the start of a new chapter, we should pause and ask ourselves, how do we go forward from here? And that's why I've called elections to seek a new mandate at this key turning point in our history, to take Singapore forward beyond, to take Singapore forward beyond SG50. In three days' time, you will decide. Decide your vote, by your vote, your future. Ask yourself, are you really satisfied with what we have today, now, for future generations, for your children, for your grandchildren, or can we do even better? Keep on improving our lives, keep on taking Singapore higher, build something lasting and worthwhile for our children. I believe, I believe we want to climb higher. Why do I think that? Because that is the Singapore spirit. 
That's how we got here. If, if the pioneer generation has said, okay, la, good enough already, we would still be where we were. The Singapore River would still be smelling out this place and Singapore would be in the dumps and left behind. But they worked hard, they sacrificed for their children so that we, their children, could have a better life. Now it's our turn. The question is asked of us. Do we have the same spirit as the pioneers? Yes. yes. Do we want to protect what we have and build on what we have? Yes, of course. Do we want our children to live better lives than us? just like we live better lives than our parents. Of course. If so, let us be prepared to buckle down, work, even sacrifice. Sacrifice for one another. Most of all, sacrifice for a better tomorrow for our children. In this last term of governments, since the last time I came here and talked to you at this spot in 2011, but actually for many years before that, the PAP has been working hard with you to improve lives and to take Singapore forward. And the results speak for themselves. We've worked hard for the seniors, the seniors who deserve peace of mind in their golden years, who deserve to live out their years with dignity. How have we done that? PG package have reduced their medical bills. MediShield Life has given every Singaporean better medical coverage for life. We've improved CPF. We've introduced silver support to ease the burden for retirees. So we are helping old people. We are helping young people too, couples, to own their own homes set up their own homes, start their own families. In this last four years, we've launched 100,000 HDB flats. 100,000. That means every year, four years, one Clementi new, stand, new town started. We've increased housing grants so that the houses are more affordable, especially more affordable for the people who most need help, the low-income groups. We've improved the baby bonus. We've got more maternity leave. We've got paternity leave as well. So the fathers amongst you, I think quite a number are here today. Please do your duty. Look after your babies. Don't leave it to poor mum at home. and then you may have another boy or another girl. Most importantly, we've kept Singapore safe and sound, a place where people feel confident, confident about their safety, confident about their future, willing to say, let's have a kid. He will have a bright future ahead of him. We've lightened the load on the sandwich generation, sandwiched by the old folks needing medical care, not so well already, perhaps at home, maybe invalid in bed, and with the kids not yet grown up, still needing to be supported, needing to be educated. We have helped them with all kinds of schemes. The PGP has helped them. One day recently, I met a man. He was much younger than me, 50-something years old, perhaps. And he said to me, thank you, sir, for the PGP. I said, 
Why do you thank me? You don't qualify. He said, no, I don't qualify, but my parents qualify. And the PGP has taken some of the load off my shoulders. Thank you very much. I said, thank you for your support. That's why we did it. So I'm happy to see a wide group of Singaporeans with better lives, better lifestyles, better pay, better hope for the future. If you go house to house, you'll see lots of homes have big screen TVs. Essential? No. Nice to have? Yes. Should we have it? If we can afford it, why not? A lot of households travel, a lot of families travel, go overseas for holidays. When there's a travel fair in Singapore, it's full of people and all the packages are sold out. When I hold an election in September, people say, please watch out, our first, of, first week of September, school holidays are. I want to vote, please tam, tam siong a little bit. When I travel overseas, I meet Singaporeans everywhere. Recently, I was in Hokkaido on holiday with my family. I met dozens of Singaporeans from the first stop to the last stop everywhere. Mr. Lee, how about a selfie? I said, yes, of course. What are you doing here? I'm on holiday, school holiday time. Last week, I went to Serangoon Gardens Market. The hawker selling hockey noodles was so happy to see me. He said, hi, Mr. Lee, good to see you again. When did we last meet? In Hokkaido. We, we took a picture together. Actually, I put his picture on Facebook. So he showed me a copy to sign. I signed. His son gave me a copy to sign. I said, you also went to Hokkaido. He says, yes, three-generation family, all of us went. So I think he may be in Aljunit GRC, but I think that family is voting for the PAP. Of course, not everybody can have a little bit of extra money to spend, and we know that there are low-income families, there are needy families, and we go that extra mile to help them so that the basics are always within reach with workfare, with comcare, with a progressive wage package, making sure that they can take care of themselves and tomorrow can be better. And particularly, we help them to have a home so that with $1,000 of income a month, you can buy an HDB two-room flat just with your CPF, no cash. <laughs> Where else in the world can you do that? People say, Ooya, boya. Is it real or not? I say, Ooya. How do I know? Because in four years, nearly 2,000 such families have bought two-room HDB flats, and I think they are doing just okay. Our policies have helped Singaporean workers too. You've heard Sui Se, you've heard Sui Kiat just now explain how wages have been going up, how with Skills Future we're helping to upgrade our people, how we've tightened up on employment passes, We've got a fair consideration framework. Make sure that Singaporean professionals, you get a fair crack at the jobs. If you are good, you will get considered. And you can show yourself, prove yourself, and move up. Finally, for the young generation, we make sure that they have a bright future. Opening new pathways and opportunities. School of the Arts, School of Science and Technology, Northlight School, Sports School, different skills, different schools, different opportunities, many paths all going up, letting people chase rainbows. At the National League Rally this year, I mentioned Tang Kai. He's a student, 
He nearly failed his PSLE. He went to normal technical and secondary school. He went on to ITE, did well. He went on to the poly, did well. He went on to SIT, the university. He became an animator, a designer for computer animation. He got a degree from DigiPen Institute of Technology, the top institute in the world for people making animations and special effects. And he's now graduated with a DigiPen degree and a job as an animator. I think that is the Singapore story. We work together, we can make many more Chiang Kai's possible in Singapore. Different names, but all like Chiang Kai. And 50 years from now, Singaporeans will be able to say, back at that important election in 2011, my grandfather or my father, he made the right choice, he set us on the right path, we worked from that last 50 years, We've done good work. Now, SG100, time for grandchildren and great-grandchildren to take over. I think it's our job to make sure that 50 years' time, some prime minister can stand here and say that to you, to your grandchildren. And then you and I, those of us who may not be here anymore, will be upstairs taking a look down and we will say, well done, keep up the good work. SG100. This is what the PAP would like to do with you if you give us a chance. Can we do better? No. Can we achieve our aspirations? No. Of course, yes we can. Of course, there will be challenges. We are a small country, we are a little red dot. Life is never easy. For example, look at terrorism. Look at ISIS. Last month, a bomb went off in Bangkok. 20 people died. One was an innocent Singaporean. What has it got to do with us? Well, it's a terrorist group. Who are they? Not sure. Maybe Turks, maybe Uyghurs. But it's a terrorist group and it has, there's some connection there. Who are they connected with? Suspicion, there's some connection also with terrorist groups in Indonesia, in Poso. What do the Indonesian terrorist groups want to do? Some of them are thinking about Singapore. Not thinking like you and me, thinking of letting off bombs in Singapore. Will we stop them? We'll do our damnness. Can we be absolutely sure nothing will ever happen? Nobody can be absolutely sure. But these are real dangers we must remember. And polling day, it so happens, is 911. just to remind ourselves. We will look the other way, Malaysia. Ringgit, three ringgit, one Singapore dollar. For shopping in JB, very good, right? For worrying about our neighbour, not so good. Because if there's loss of confidence in our neighbour, if their currency goes down, their economy is weak, it's bad for us. People will think the whole region is not so safe, and including Singapore. So we worry about Malaysia. They had a birthday four rally last week. Big crowds turned up. So now they have an anti-birthday rally coming. Anti-birthday doesn't mean dirty, you know. Anti-birthday is anti-birthday not Koto. 
and anti Berse is coming, and they are going to hold a big rally on the 16th of September. It's a coincidence, but you just think of the contrast. For us, it's a founder's birthday. For Malaysia, it's a time of tension and unease. And there's a strong racial undertone to this, because birthday was non-Malay, and anti birthday is many Malay groups. So these are things we worry about. Our nearest neighbour, our next nearest neighbour, Indonesia. What do we worry about? Just look around you at the grey haze. Just smell the air. Today, PSI 100. Where does it come from? You know where it comes from. Why does it come here? They are burning forests. It's blowing here. What can we do about it? Well, we are helping, working with them, offering to help them. But basically, they have to solve the problem. The government is cooperative. Attitudes amongst the community, something different. Whenever there's a haze blowing over to us or to Malaysia, somebody in Indonesia will say, these people are so ungrateful. 11 months we supply them fresh air. Never charge for oxygen. One month haze already so unhappy. So what is the attitude? This is a little red dot. You should know your place in the world. Small country versus big country, better tabi a little bit. So that is the way the world is. We can handle it. We have dealt with it for 50 years. Even when we had two infantry battalions, we managed to see through and to get here. Today, with the SAF, with the home team, with all of your support, with a good government, I think whatever the haze, whatever the birthday or non-birthday, I think we make Singapore succeed in Singapore. How do we do that? We do that by staying one united people. It's been our formula. It's been our mantra. Actually, it's our secret recipe. Why is it secret? Not that people don't know it, but people cannot do it. We can do it. We keep faith with one another. The government works with the people. The people support the government. Together, we got to SG50. Together, we will get to SG100. So, we've got to get our politics right. How do you do that? First, you must vote for the right people. You vote for the right people, the right people are in charge, are responsible, they have the right policies, they set the right politics, they put the country onto the right path, and then we will be heading in a good direction for a long time to come. You do it wrong, wrong people in charge, or you vote against good people, and you discourage good people from serving, country goes wrong, very hard to come back again. Our politics is changing. The world is changing. Singapore is changing. Our politics will have to change. But we have to work together, even if we have to work harder, to have a national consensus, to be able to form that will, that power, that strength together. So when we move forward, we move as one people, and we get there as one united people people. How must our politics be if we are going to do that? First of all, they have to be honest. 
The politics have to be honest. The people have to be clean and honest also. If you are not honest, if you are not clean, if you have a black mark, whether people know it or not, please stay out of politics. And so we need honest politicians, and we also need voters who can tell the difference between people who are honest and people who are not. And I was very, very surprised yesterday that here on this spot yesterday to hear Dr. Chi Sun Juan say, reputation is temporary, but character is permanent. I agree. I think Dr. Chi has every reason to know that character is permanent, doesn't change. We cannot have corruption in Singapore. We cannot have wrongdoing in the government or in high places in Singapore. That's why we have the CPIB reporting to me as PM. And if I don't give approval to the CPIB to investigate somebody, the CPIB can go to the president and ask the president for approval. President says, yes, CPIB can proceed against the PM. That's why we have the Auditor General's office to keep the government straight, to keep our statutory board straight, and once in a while to find out whether the town councils are straight or not straight. These are the PAP standards, and these also have to be the opposition standards. Just because you don't wear white doesn't mean you shouldn't be white or needn't be white. That's what is different about Singapore. I can show it to other people. Can they do it? Not so easy. That's what we must always keep precious in Singapore. So maybe that is why when Mr. Lee Kuan Yew had his 90th birthday, we had a little celebration in Parliament. And he was too weak to make a speech, but he came, he joined us in the members' room. We made a birthday cake, we sang a song, blew the candles, and he made a small speech. He talked about only one thing. He said, remember, keep our system clean. And I should, note, I should note that that was not just PAP MPs having a celebration. That was all of the MPs having a celebration, including the opposition MPs. So the PAP MPs took note of what he said. I hope the opposition MPs also took note of what he said. Keep our system clean! You may be running the government, you may be running a ministry, you can be in a stat board, you can be in a town council, doesn't matter. Whatever level you are, uphold high standards, keep it clean. And don't say, I didn't go to jail, I'm okay. The second thing about politics is that we must take care of our people today and we must take care of our people also for tomorrow. If you only want to worry about today, it's very easy to do politics. I write checks 
tomorrow somebody else can pay. No problem. Anybody can do that. But if I want to worry about today and tomorrow also, then I have to balance, I have to trade off, I have to sacrifice, I have to plan, and I have to work hard. And that's why actually only the PAP does that. The opposition parties, tomorrow is after the general election, worry later. So you cannot write checks for your children to pay. You cannot make promises knowing that you're going to be in the opposition so the government can fulfill if the government can. It's always a temptation in an election and it's not just in Singapore. You just look at the list of things which have come up. If you attend opposition rallies, soon you have a long list of things to ask the government for. Free health care, $300 for old people, $300 for young people, free taxi rides. If you need to go to see a doctor, minimum wage. And if minimum wage means unemployment, never mind. We give money to the unemployed also. Everything can. Who to pay? No problem, just raise taxes. Big companies can pay, rich people can pay. And if still not enough money, reserves got money, what? Hundreds of billions of dollars are, according to the opposition. With that attitude, in Chinese they say, which means, which means you sit there, you eat up your seed corn, all your savings, one day the mountain is gone and you will starve. If it was really so simple, why do you think the PAP is not doing all these things? We are so stupid. We are quite slow, but not so slow as all that. Certainly, we would have been more popular. There would be even more applause than you're giving me today. And the opposition, maybe fewer subjects to make speeches. But would we have built this Singapore? Would we be standing here surrounded by these buildings, this prosperity, this success? Would we have that toughness to continue to fight as Singaporeans for our future and our children's future? So, the government in politics, please think about our future, yours and mine. Thirdly, for politics to work, we must have good people in government. Capable people, committed people, people who will work hard, people whose hearts are in the right place. I read in the newspapers, Peng Eng Huat, Workers' Party candidate, saying, don't worry, you know, you look at Thailand. They have military coup, still okay, what? No need for government, civil service is very good. We'll look after you, everything will carry on. No government, you can go home, still take bath, hot water, still running. If that is the Workers' Party's measure of good politics and success, if ever the Workers' Party becomes the government of Singapore, I say liao. Finish. And you should make no mistake about it. They aspire to be the government of Singapore. Why should they not? They are entitled to, but we are entitled to ask them, what are you capable of doing? What do you intend to do? Show that you are fit to be the government of Singapore. Don't take the item, don't go and write soft words in your manifesto. Manifesto, don't say you're going to be the government, but you tell people, one day I will be a government, not yet, nah. just give me a chance. So I think that if Mr. Lo Tia Kiang were honest, he would say yes, when he heard Peng Eng Huat say those things on stage, he also malu, don't know where to hide his face. So I think you must have a good government, you must have good leaders, and then the leaders can make the system work well. And we need a strong Singapore team working with the leaders. 
supporting the leaders, giving us ideas, giving us feedback, helping to guide us the right directions, what are the things which people most need done, most want to see happen in Singapore. I think that is what will keep Singapore successful tomorrow. And that's how Mr Lee Kuan Yew did it. He did a lot of things alone because of him, his ideas, his drive, his leadership. But he didn't do it by himself. He did it with a strong team. Go King Sui, Rajaratnam, Lim Kim San, Hon Sui Sen, Osman Wok. Partners, people who worked together, who worked with Singaporeans, who made Singapore go from 1965 to 2015. After Mr. Lee and his team, Mr. Go Chok Tong and his team took over. Again, a strong team. Many strong players. Tony Tan, Dana Balan, Ong Ping Chong, and more. Ahmad Mata. They worked. They took Singapore another step forward. Ten years ago, I and my team took over. We did our best to take Singapore further forward. I think that is the way to make Singapore work. But the trouble is, I'm not getting younger. My core team is also not getting younger. We are at least late 50s, some early 60s, some not so very early. And every year, you don't get younger. And we must make sure that we have a team in depth, in our ranks, ready to take over from us, ready to take Singapore beyond us and do even more than what me and my generation, we are able to do for Singapore to achieve our aspirations. We have a nucleus of that group. We have been assembling it over the years. Last election, I brought in some more people. Heng Sui Kiat, Lawrence Wong, Chan Chun Singh, Tan Chuan Jin. I took in people from the back benches. Josephine, Indrani, Faisal, and we are building the nucleus of a new team. It's starting to come together. But I need more. You need more. Singapore needs more. So this election, I'm adding more. When people say, Chia Yo, here is Chia Liao. Add more substance. Ng Chi Meng, Ong Yi Kang, Chi Hong Tat, many others, Amrin, people who can make a contribution, people who have potential, people who will show their commitment and prove themselves and in due course will be able to form that bond with you, with your children. We need a deep bench, we need the best possible team for Singapore. We don't need an opposition which says, I'm not ready to form the government, but never mind, just vote for me, you're buying insurance. Let me explain to you insurance. Insurance is good, but you must buy the right insurance from the right company. If you buy NTUC income, I think it's okay. NTUC income, NTUC name is there. Lim Sui Se used to be NTUC. It's a reputable company. If you buy MediShield Life, the Singapore government is standing there. So, when people say CPF no money to pay, I said that was 30 years ago, election rally, come back, old tape, rewind, play back again. CPF life, government will be standing there. 
But if your insurance company is an opposition party, no track record, or worse, don't know how to handle money, All the insurance salesman not interested in you only wants his commission. <laughs> then you buy your insurance now, you pay premium, you feel okay. One day you run into trouble, they look for the insurance company to pay out. Then you know you're in trouble. So politics is not just policies, not just words. Finally, it comes down to people. And to produce results for you, I need to have the right team to work with me, to work with you, to work for you and for Singapore. And I need that support not just in Ang Mokyo GRC, I'm very grateful to the voters in Ang Mokyo GRC for supporting me all these years. Thank you. I think there are many of you in the crowd today. But I need that support from all of you all over Singapore. Whichever constituency it is, whether it's West Coast or East Coast, whether it's Feng Shan or Aljunid, whether it's McPherson or Bukit Panjang, the PAP candidate standing there is standing on behalf of the PAP. So by voting for him, you are voting for me, you are voting for my team, you are voting for my program and you are voting for my promise. And the promise is we will work with you to make Singapore better for you and your children. I think that's our formula for success. The opposition's formula, which you have heard in these last few days, and which are, they are circulating around, including on WhatsApp, that doesn't make sense. Their formula is like this. They say, if the government has done a good job, it's because you voted for the opposition. So vote more for the opposition, government will work harder. Never mind if the opposition is not doing work. And what sort of politics is that? You vote for me, PAP will produce miracles. Don't worry, I don't have to do anything. The PAP will do everything you need to do. It's perverse. It's upside down. You confuse yourself, you mess things up, you weaken your team, and you end up with an outcome which you don't want, an opposition which is strengthened but incapable. Actually, the argument is the other way around. Let me tell you what should be the argument. Please write it down and send it to your friends on WhatsApp. The argument is like this. Opposition not working hard enough. They make a mess of things. They are not active enough in Parliament. They are really talking not much sense. Vote PAP. Make the opposition work harder.
I've been in politics now 30-something years. The first time I came down to speak here or across the, on the other side at Fullerton Square was 1984, 30 and a half years ago. Much younger, same hot sun, same crowd wanting to hear what we had to say, wanting to see how Singapore will go. Every election since then, I've been back to Fullerton Square, now to UOB Plaza. Why do I do this? Because I'm convinced that each person can make a difference. Because I think I can help. And because I think if I don't step up, doesn't mean somebody else will come along and the problem will be solved and I can happily go home and go to bed, have a hot shower. No problem. I feel I have that duty. I have to do something about it. Which is why, which is why in 1984, when Mr. Go Chok Tong asked me to enter politics, I thought about it and I said yes. And I think that's also why, after 30-something years, Mr. Go Chok Tong having stepped down as PM, handed over to me more than 10 years, he's still here with us, supporting us, rooting for Singapore. Why does he do that? Why do I do that? Because I feel a duty, and I think he feels a duty too, to improve life for Singaporeans, to make this a safe, secure, successful Singapore, to help Singaporeans improve their lives year by year and enable our children to have better futures and brighter opportunities. And that's what drives us, drives me, explore new possibilities, bring up spiky issues, tackle them, even immigration, very troublesome. But we have to talk about it, we have to do something about it, we have to explain to people what we are doing and why we are doing that. That's why we work with you to solve problems like cost of living. How can we make life better, not quite burden, lighter? Possibilities, more for our people. We are not the bosses of Singapore. We are not the commanders or the owners of Singapore. We are the trustees and the stewards of Singapore. We are like the Jaga. Our job to take care of this is given to us in trust to look after, to improve, and then carefully one day to hand on to a new generation. Please take care of this. A lot of loving care has gone in. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears is here. And there's a lot of value and relevance to you for your future. Please take good care of it. Take it further. In 1980, before I came into politics, at one Fullerton Square rally, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew said this. It happened to be a day when the rain was pouring down, but he poured forth all the same, more powerful than the rain. And he said, whoever, whoever governs Singapore must have that iron in him or give it up. This is not a game of cards. This is your life and mine. And Lee Kuan Yew said, I spent my whole life building this. And as long as I'm in charge, 
Nobody is knocking it down. <laughs> Mr. Lee is gone, but that spirit must continue in Singapore. That iron must be inside our hearts. And as long as the PAP is in charge, nobody should be knocking this down. And that's why I'm in politics. So if you believe in me and my team, if you believe that together we can make tomorrow better than today, please support me and my PAP team. On Youth Day in July, once a year we celebrate Youth Day, we had a big celebration this year because we opened the sports hub. I went there, I spoke to the young people, I told them the future is yours to make. We've given you all that we can, resources, education, guidance, support. It's up to you, make the most of it. Chase that rainbow, go for it. It's just a speech, right? But I think it struck a chord. Recently, somebody sent me a beautiful picture. Gardens by the bay, two domes, and one beautiful rainbow arcing over the two domes in the bay. And she told me it was taken on Youth Day, the day I happened to make that speech. So last week, last week, I took that picture and posted it on my social media. I also have social media. <laughs> Facebook and IG, Instagram. On Facebook, I got 55,000 likes. <laughs> on Instagram, 10,000 likes. Not bad. One photo, two sentences. Better than a rally speech. <laughs> Why? It struck a chord. People want to go for the rainbow in the sky. People want to achieve. They have confidence. They are going into a bright future. So that's what we must encourage. That's what we must strive for. That's how we must be. Go ahead with confidence. Worries, uncertainties, yes, there will be. We are young. If you are young, you look forward. So many choices, so many questions, what do I do? But you are young, you've got energy, you've got drive. You have tomorrow. Ming Tian Hui Keng Hao. Chase that rainbow. It will be exciting, it will be exhilarating. You put in the hard work, the dedication, mix in some talent and a little bit of luck, you will get success, fulfillment, and you will bring Singapore forward. So I ask for your trust, I ask for your support, your mandate, vote for what you believe in. Vote for the candidates you trust. Vote for the party which has never let you down. We will work with you, we will fight for you, we will work and fight for Singapore. 
Majula PAP, Majula Singapura. Thank you very much.